Hey guys, welcome to Epic Generation. I'm Christine, the creator of the show, and I'm so glad you can join me and my friends as we step into a world of fun, learning, and creativity. This show is for awesome kids like you, empowered, positive, inspirational, creative, in short, epic. I know you guys are super smart and talented and have a lot of interests, so I've put together different topics in one show that you're gonna love. Do you guys like DIY stuff? Check out Generation DIY. Do it yourself, where kids showcase their own creations that you can try at home. Who knows, you might be on this show one of these days. Did I say you're super smart? Aha, uh -huh, you're like a sponge. You guys learn so quickly and are not afraid to try new things. You're a generation of learners. So at Gen Learners, my friends will feed your curiosity in math, science, technology, arts, and even life skills. There's no limit to what you can learn. Now, whether you're a first, second, or third generation of Filipino Canadians, it's important to learn about your Philippine heritage because it's part of your identity. And lastly, we have Get Inspired, Generation Epic Talks Inspired, where we meet amazing people who will share their stories that will inspire you to reach for your dreams and be the best version of yourself. So stick around, get comfy, and enjoy. This show is for you. My name is Karina and I'm at Generation DIYs because I would like to share one of my biggest passions ever, foraging. So you're probably wondering, what is foraging? Well, it's this thing where people go outside and pick some stuff from the wild. Usually they make a use out of it, as I am doing right here with plantain. So there are two different types of plantain growing in North America. One is narrow leaf plantain. As you can see, the leaves are narrow, unlike the common plantain or broadleaf plantain, it is mostly found as a garden weed in gardens and parks. So basically, a salve is like a type of ointment you put if you get hurt. What you'll need to make the salve is coconut oil, one cup and one third of plantain, both species can be used, an empty jar, make sure that it's clean, free of anything, a pan or pot, some measuring cups, coconut oil, some scissors and tags. So first, we're gonna grab the plantain. This is washed already. Now I'm going to cut the plantain up. Next step, we're going to grab the coconut oil, one cup and one fourth, and you're going to mix it up, making sure that all these have touched the coconut oil. And you're gonna let it simmer on the stove for one hour and 35 minutes. Make sure to simmer on low heat. You'll know that it's ready when the oil turns green and that all the medicinal properties have been absorbed. When your mixture is done, you are going to grab a empty jar, make sure that the thing has cooled down. Now you're going to strain the leaves and make sure only the mixture gets into the jar. Make sure to always do this with an adult. Here's a finished sample of what it actually looks like when you're done. You can use it for cuts, burns, bites, and bruises. Make sure to store this in a cool, dry area if you're not using it. And also, it can it lasts for one year. So now that you've got your plantain salve, you might be interested in looking at more plants to use as medicine or food. But make sure, the number one rule is to always do your research before resorting to any natural medicine or food because there could be something toxic or something that is endangered that you might not be allowed to pick. I use these books as reference. I hope you learned something new from this video. Till next time. <laughs> Guys, I better get back to my books now. Hey 
guys, welcome to Gen Learners. Today we'll be learning a different kind of math, how to use the abacus and how to do addition and subtraction in our heads. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Miss Florence and now I'm going to teach you about the abacus. So, let me first tell you what is abacus all about. Abacus is an ancient calculating tool used many years ago. Don't you know that abacus is still used worldwide until now? Because of its benefits, it will improve your concentration, your analytical skills, overall, your whole brain development. And in due time, with the continuous use of abacus, you will be able to do mental math without the use of the calculator. This is the abacus frame. And this is the center rod or the center bar. And in between the center bar, you can see it divides the upper beads and the lower beads. And you will see also the sticks that holding the beads is what we call the rod. You will notice that there is five dots, and dot represents the unit rod. But first, we will concentrate on the home rod. The home rod is representing the ones and going to the left, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. But first, now we're gonna concentrate on the home rod. I'm going to teach you also what is the proper finger movements of the abacus. Remember always to use the thumb so you, to move the beads at the bottom, like this. One, add two, add one again, it will become three, and add one again will become four. And to take away the beads at the bottom, you will use your pointy finger. And you will use also the big finger for the beads at the top, like this. Five, take away five. And now, how do we do six in the abacus? You will see five, and then add one at the bottom, will become six. And if you add another one again, it will become seven. And if you add one again, this will become eight. And you add one again, will become nine. Okay, guys, let's do another one. Simple calculation. So this is six, add two, What's the answer? Yes, correct. It's eight. And now take away three, add two, will become seven. So another one, we will do another simple math calculation by using subtraction. So if we add five, add three at the bottom, and then you will take away two. What's the answer? Six, correct. So you can do this, children, in your home by visualizing and imagining the movements of the bits. And that is the start of your mental math. So we will practice again. Add five, add four. What's the answer? Nine, correct. So, we will take away five, take away three, and what's the answer? One. Always remember that if you will move the bits going up and going, and this at the top going down, it will have a value. But if there is no beads touching the center bar, it doesn't have a value. The answer will be zero. Now we're gonna have a mental math challenge. And we have here uh, Liam, who will be using the calculator. 
And we have here Aiden, we're going to use the mental math. So whoever answers first will be the winner, okay? So we have a three rounds here, Liam. Okay, so let's start. Everyone ready? Six, one, take away two, three, one. Answer? Nine. You okay, Liam? Nine. Okay. So, next number is one, two, five, one. Take away three. Answer? Six. Three. It's six. <laughs> okay, so another round. Six, take away one. Take away five, four, take away one, answer? Three. <laughs> so we have a winner here. Yay! So see kids how you did it very fast without the use of the calculator? So now you can start practicing and try learning the abacus. Wow, wasn't that so cool? Who knew that learning the abacus would be so much fun and that you can even beat the calculator? Keep learning, till next time. Hey guys, welcome to Dated TG. Pinoy Generation, I'm your host, Gabrielle, and today, what, Ava? That's my instrument. You are using it so it's mine. Please. Okay, there you go. So, today, I'll be talking about this instrument I got from a Philippine festival. Here it is. They used it out of a coconut husk, and they took out everything from there, and they used that outside. And they turned it into an instrument. You can play it like this, while using the keys. The instrument makes their vibrating sound by these metal-like sticks and this hollow entrance for a hole. When using it, it's like a guitar and a piano combined. In the Philippines, they use a coconut husk to clean or polish the floors. This also sounds like a drum. Well, thank you for watching and learning about a new instrument using the coconut husk. Who thought they could invent this coconut husk to be an instrument? All right, guys, till next time, proud to be Pinoy. Welcome to Get Inspired. This segment of Epic Generation. Uh, my name is Melanie May Lozaro. You're Miss Philippines PIDC 2018. Um, Stephanie? My name is Stephanie Artus, and thank you for introducing of me, course. Melanie. I'm the reigning Miss PIDC 2019, and thank you for having us today. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so to get things started, um, so again, my name is Melanie. Um, I started my pageant career back in 2011. I joined Little Miss Philippines PIDC. Um, and I think from that point on, growing up, it was definitely something difficult because at such a young age, I was hit with so many events, so many things to do, right? And I think it was very important for me to learn time management and to make sure that regardless of what I was doing, I still had time for myself, had time for my family. Um, when it came to the point where I did this pageant, I definitely learned that it's not easy. It really isn't. And that's the hard truth, right? But I think what's important is that no matter what happens at the end of the day, nothing really matters. And what judgment is there to face is by yourself. And I think that every single one of you should remember that with ourselves, there's so much beauty in us than what we see. If we face a mirror and we don't think one thing is pretty, that's OK, because at some point, we're gonna accept that like part of ourselves. And I think that's something I embraced 
when I joined this pageant. <laughs> Very well said, Melanie. Thank My you. name is Stephanie, and I'm the reigning Miss uh, PIDC 2019. Growing up, um, it is really tough. I had lost my father at an early age, and I had my mom. I had always counted, counted on me as the oldest child to help her around the house, and uh, I chose to focus on on my studies and my career for that very reason. Is in order to lighten the load for my mom. And I came at a point where I had finished my school, I got started in my career, and uh, joining pageants had always been in the back of my head, uh, but I was just scared. And I think it's normal to be scared of things you don't know, um, no matter uh, which stage you are in your life, whether you're 12 years old, you're 17 years old like Melanie, or 23 like me, we are still scared of things that we are going to embark upon, and that's okay. But I feel that in order to be the best version of yourselves, you have to step on the other side of fear and give it a shot. And one thing that I have learned in life, and I will pass on to you, is to never look at situations as win or lose. Even if you don't win, you still learn something. And for example, in this pageant, I had learned sportsmanship. These are the women that I had had the chance of knowing are women that are going to do other things in the community as well, aside from the pageant. And you also get to learn people that will play a very important if in your life, even if not now, maybe in the future. So, um, you know, and try to have fun while you're doing it. We all have things to do uh, that we're scared of, but I think it's also important to have fun in everything that you do. And in terms of beauty, I know that appearances, um, Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you feel that it's re relevant, but beauty is always about how you feel on the inside too, because what you feel on the inside will also show on the outside. Yeah. Okay, so you said, Melanie, that you had trouble when you were younger managing your time. So how did you go upon managing your time? I think, um, Definitely, like because growing up I was such like so young, I definitely needed the assistance of my mom and my parents. Definitely, um, having them beside me really helped me realize what I need to prioritize. Um, and obviously, you need to take things slowly. So for me, I started off with prioritizing my studies. Definitely, education is something you need to rely on, something you definitely need in life. So I prioritize my studies. And then what comes second is would be my extracurricular, so my pageants, my singing, and whatnot. And I think by taking things slowly and taking things step by step, I think it makes the whole weight of whatever you have to go through easier because it's like solving a puzzle. You're taking one piece at a time, little sections, and putting them together to create that one big masterpiece. And I think with time management, um, it's important that you find those pieces that fit together so you can like, link them together. And I think slowly but surely, it'll find a way. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so I do Taekwondo, and when I compete, I get most nervous when I'm going onto the mat. So you mentioned how you got scared when you were gonna go on the stage and compete. Yes. And how did you overcome your fears or your nerves? I think everyone has their way of approaching different things, um, such as overcoming their fears. For me, it's taking deep, deep breaths because, um, you know, I and I tell myself that I'm going to be okay because you're always going to be okay, and I think it's important to tell yourself that and not to. Uh, keep taunting yourself of, uh, you know, of the unknown. Because when you're scared, chances are it's because you don't know what's gonna happen. And that's perfectly fine. And uh, another important thing is also to, um, to know what techniques uh, there are that, um, that would allow you to overcome those fear, whether that's having something to squeeze in your hand or talking to your mom and you know, letting her know how you feel. That way you can get the nervousness out before you compete or before you go on stage or even talking to your friends. Uh, be, friends are great. They can give you really valuable advice on how to approach such things. And I feel like it's important to just do whatever works for you. Yeah. Um, are there things you say to yourself to gain more confidence because I have difficulty believing in myself so how did you gain the confidence for your pageants and stuff um, for me 
growing up, it was like hard because I was one of like the chubby kids and stuff like that. So it was hard for me to believe in myself too. But I kept telling myself, no matter what happens at the end of the day, what matters most is what I feel about what I do and what, if what I do is what I love, then there shouldn't be any judgment by myself. If I can have the power to even set foot in what I'm gonna do or even start in what I'm gonna do, I have the power to like tell myself, yeah, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm her, that's me, that's me, you know, yeah. Believing in yourself, I, you know, uh, chances are we, it's in this day and age we always compare ourselves to other, to other people. You know, we see a lot of uh, now we're exposed to social media 24/7, or we see a lot of advertisements in TV, and sometimes we compare to us, our, ourselves to those people when we shouldn't be. I think everyone's different and everyone's unique, and what makes us really beautiful is those differences. And it's important to tell yourself that you are beautiful just the way you are, and and uh, the differences that you have compared to other people is what makes you really, really unique. So, for example, I know that you dance, Kirsten, and I think that's that's something that's, you know, a unique talent that you have. And it's important to tell yourself that I have strengths, that um, I have you have strengths uh, that makes you, uh, you know, that makes you beautiful, like just the way you are. Yeah. And to kind of pitch yeah, into what yeah. Steph said. Um, I remember a quote where it says, why force yourself to yeah. fit in when you were just born to stand out? Mm -hmm. And I think having those differences and uniqueness to you is definitely what shapes you into the mm -hmm. person you are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if there's one thing that you could take out from today's segment, what would that be? Be unique. Definitely, I think being mm -hmm. unique mm -hmm. and just standing out is what makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And embracing yourselves and the differences that you have against other people. Uh, do keep in mind that our differences is what makes us strong, not only as girls, but I think, you know, in our community as yeah. well and around the world. And thank you guys for inviting yeah. us once again. It's such an honor to be here. And just remember, girls supporting girls, everyone supporting everyone. We're all here for each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Our DIY today is very interesting. How to make your own salve or salve. See how our friend was able to turn her interest in plants into something useful? And what do you think about the abacus and doing math in your head? If you don't like math, then check out other ways to learn it that could make it fun. Now, whoever invented that coconut husk guitar is so creative. It just shows that you can make music out of different things. Lastly, I hope you'll remember the advice from our beauty queens to be unique. You should embrace your own unique qualities. Being different from everybody else is actually good. Can you imagine how boring this world would be if we all look, think, and act the same way? Remember that you are beautiful. So till next time on our epic adventure.